the air in where we could talk to Eric, Eric talk to y'all. Not no third party running around. We don't care how bad things get or cause we are forgiven. None of us is perfect. We all go through things, come out of things. I say that to say this. Y'all all need to get together. We don't need to talk to our nest, give her more work to do than she's already doing when we have appointed us a councilman to chair for us. And, and last but not least, when somebody come up here to speak, you shouldn't wait till everybody else has spoken before you comment. You should comment after each individual. That way you'll be fresh in your mind Amen. as to what they Amen. said and what we're trying to get a point. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is the Reverend William Whitaker. Reverend Whitaker. Good evening, Council, and have a blessed 2014. We're talking about money and saving money. We have a financial manager here. Republic has come in and taken over everything. It's basically been privatized. But yet there is park and rec that is still there drawing over $80,000, and who does he have under him, and what is he doing? If the, since the mayor's money was reduced, it seems as though since he doesn't have that many personnel, that his money should be reduced also. He had great joy in laying off persons that said the only thing that he did was Twitter and play the games and all that. I don't know. But I know to bid $90,000 and you have far less than you have and everything else is privatized. That's one complaint. The other, I, I take it very seriously that when I have a council person and I don't have access or rights to him, you have violated my rights, that of the community. Now, the other thing is, is that it seems to me that I heard that we are dealing with robbing hooding. What do you mean by that? That the poor has to bear what is going on while people come in and take money and leave out. Maybe we need to change this tax structure and people who take money out of this area ought to believe something or be required to stay in this city in order to do that. You cannot, according to what I've listened to, to the financial manager, what I've listened to or both of them are on the same page. No one has any rights unless you do it my way. Where is reasoning? Amen. We have human will and determination. Amen. We can make decisions if we sit down. Amen. But when you are on welfare and you're faring well, you don't understand Amen. what it is to pay bills Amen. when you're receiving rent. Amen. That's my problem. Not including what's going on in the community. I get tired, you know, I mean, I really didn't want to come down here. But it's one thing in my studies, I may not know too much about a lot of things, but Amen. one area it is, theology is my area. Amen. I know I'm in the top 5%. I'm here, it doesn't matter. You're in my backyard. I stayed back there. Amen. And I came back here to make a difference. How can you come up with $1.6 billion that was lost and all of a sudden you discovered it? There's no way in the world you can do that. You had to take it from the pension. People earn that. If you want to, do, if you want to cut it, cut your salaries at the top. Be an example. It cost us. Every time you look around, you got a pipeline that you don't need that was said some years ago, 125,000, you could do it, run the water and build here. How in the world do you have, start off with $60 on a water bill, turn around and you get what, 750 gallons for $16? It's 30 gallons of what, a, a bathtub. I don't know that many that's using that much water. I don't know, 
But I know a woman that she can't even get anything done, and she owes three to four hundred dollars, but she can't get any assistance. Amen. Something's wrong with that people. I love people. I love Amen. senior citizens. Amen. General Motors is gone. You're going to have to create jobs. Amen. And, you, and guess what? Don't tell me about crime in Flint. Amen. I'm out in Holly and Grand Blank. I'm, I'm going. No, just place okay. some up. You have okay. a minute. I'm out there in Grand Blank and Holly. It's more, there's more rims, more drugs, more stuff going on. It's not, repi not reported. I was taught in seminary that what? Media assassination. Amen. You don't even want the communication here. What's going on? And everyone has the right to know. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Good Gus talk. Clark. Mr. Clark. Good evening. Good evening to the mayor, uh, council, and the city of Flint members. I got one or two things. Uh, the first one is that uh, I got a condemned house on the side of me that has been for demolition almost five years or so and stuff. I heard about the blight. Uh, and I would like to have it. I'm concerned about demolition and personally myself uh, for me to have that lot or that land uh, to do either some uh, uh, building on toward to my uh, uh, house or to have more yard for the dog or whatever may have you. But before I got, uh, get to my question at the end, I want to speak about uh, the snowstorm or so, you know, and this is mind-boggling to me, that uh, the citizens of Flint, whatever the city asks for, whether it is to cut uh, lots, uh, yards or so, that is uh, uh, vacant or so and stuff they can carrying on, or whatever that the city asks for the citizens to do, we abide to that or so and stuff. Now, just with this snowstorm, it was put on the news that if we don't move our vehicles from off the street, hmm. you will give us a ticket or tow it. <laughs> now, if the buses and EMT can't get in, how are we going to get them off? Amen. That's mind-boggling to me. Now, I called about four weeks ago my city councilman in the Fifth Ward left a message about I was about my concerns or so. I have not got a response from him. So being that I'm here, I shouldn't have to come down here to get a response. So I'm going to respond to all of y'all about my concerns. Where do I go from here about my concerns? Where do I go from this point about my concerns? That's it. Thank you. Our next speaker, Madam Clerk. Our next speaker is Alonzo Goodman. Mr. Goodman. Good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> to uh, the city manager, to the mayor, the council, City Clerk, I have Brown. My concern is a couple of concerns. One of them is this affidavit of Sherry Eastep. Pardon me if I'm not pronouncing it right. But I was with Councilman Mays on that day, on December the second, I think it was. And he had called me and told me that his vehicle had been impounded that he needed a ride to go check on it. <clears throat> and when we come down there to deal with the issue, Councilman Mays was on the phone conducting some business. And she got offended because when she called him up front, he was still on the phone. And he was trying to tell the person, whoever it was, I don't know who it was, that Amen. I'm... On, I'm downtown, I'm trying to conduct some business, can I get back with you? And whoever was on the phone with him, whatever their concern was, seemed to be more important than what he was talking about. So I think she got offended because 
he didn't get right off the phone. Now, I read this affidavit over very carefully, and it didn't quite go like that from my recollection. I don't remember all this conversation. It went from her calling him to the window, he's on the phone trying to get the person off the phone, to her saying, we're no longer conducting business and let the shades down. Now, I can recall this conversation, but this conversation was discussed with her supervisor because Councilman Mays got upset because he was trying to figure out how much it was going to cost to get his vehicle out. And his dialogue to the people that was in the lobby there was that if you come down here to conduct business, city business, that you should be treated with respect. Amen. You should be treated uh, with courtesy. He wasn't angry. He wasn't unruly. Amen. I was there. I seen exactly what went on. Amen. So if we got people in position, <clears throat> leaders and police officers and stuff, we want to treat the public with respect regardless of what's going on. Amen. I'm quite sure she probably knew what had happened, had read in the news or heard it or whatever. So what I'm saying is, is that he was simply trying to address that he should have been respected and treated with courtesy. And that's what went on there, not exactly what I'm reading here. Also, another concern I have is, is to Councilman Nolan. My concern is, I, and I want you to address this, you know, because you can't do it right now, so hopefully you can remember when you get a chance to speak. Someone called me and told me that you addressed them and said, tell Alonzo Goodman that he's does not intimidate me. Well, I'm not a gangster. I'm not trying to intimidate anyone. Uh, so I didn't take it any further than that because I don't usually go with the third party. In what way did I try to intimidate you? What did I do or say to make you feel threatened? And if I did, I apologize because I don't operate like that. What I was downtown at the city hall with a friend 